Paul in Titus 1 talks about Paul, a servant of God, apostle of Christ, appointed by Christ to further the faith, further the faith and the knowledge of the truth of God's elect or God's people. That leads to God leaders in the hope of in the hope of leading to eternal life as promised by God before the foundation of the earth. This is amazing. Paul said he's preaching, he's teaching, he's equipping the saints, the people, the God's elect, the people of God, by furthering the, their faith and the knowledge of the truth. Two things go hand in hand. Your faith and the knowledge of the truth of the Word of God go hand in hand. They got to go hand in hand. They cannot go independently or separately. They are intertwined. Your faith and your knowledge of the Word of God comes go together. It makes sense because your word, faith comes from hearing. Hearing the Word of Christ, the Bible says. Hearing the Word of Christ. So you can't grow your faith without the Word of God. Now, the reverse is also true. You can have lots of Word of God hearing, but your faith don't grow. And that would be a problem too, right? That would be the case of, what do you call, hardened hearts, intellectual knowledge. The intellectual knowledge don't cause your faith to grow. But heart knowledge by the Holy Spirit will cause your faith to grow. That leads to godliness. There's a third item. You can't have godliness without faith and the, and the truth. The effort to be godly depends on your faith. Yep. Faith in God, in Christ. How can you handle the worldliness, the temptations of the world, the discouragement from the world, the disruption and the... And the and the allurement of the sensuality of the world and the uh, temptation of the world if you don't have the faith that stands firm on the Word of God, on the promises of God's Word. You know, the promises of God's Word only becomes rhetoric or just simply words. They don't empower you. Then, then what? Then that will become useless. You see, you need um, the Word of God becomes alive in you so to to give you the strength and the power to resist the devil to lead me not into temptations but deliver me from the evil one the Lord's Prayer you need the Lord to lead you to take you out of the temptations you know depression sometimes this temptation uh, what do you call uh, disruption um, comes from the from the world or the forces of darkness are not temptation per se but they are persecutions you see they are temptations there's also the sense of persecutions persecution can make you down draw you make you go down but you need the faith of god to stand strong and fight it off just like the bible uh the scripture said take on the helmet of salvation the shield of faith why shield because of enemies, the, the devil is constantly throwing, throwing uh, arrows and darts and shooting at you. And as a Christian, if you are not a Christian, he will love you to death. He will not shoot anything to you. Now you want to become a Christian, he's going after you. Now, especially if you want to serve the Lord in some capacity, in some way, some form, preaching the gospel, you got his attention, man. So he start throwing discouragement, uh, things to pull you down. And uh, if you use rational mind thinking, what is throwing at you kind of makes sense. I'm telling you from personal experience. He's not dumb. He's throwing some smart arrows, some sleek ones at you, you know? So you need the shield to block it. What is the shield? The Bible says, shield of faith. Hallelujah. That's the same word, faith. You know, faith is not just for healing. Faith isn't just uprooting a tree. Faith for uh, ministry to grow, business to prosper, 
whatever good things there may be, but faith to stand against the fiery doubts of the enemy, of the evil one, all right? So faith is so important. Faith to, to, to make you strong despite the circumstances. When the world turns around against you, when you see that the situation is very desperate, you know, your kids are not turning around. You're praying and praying. All your family, or your business, or your job, or anything, or ministry. Nothing's clicking. But you know, this is, this is, this is, we have the oversight of God's eyes who looks over us. And He promised us before the foundations of the earth. Hallelujah. See, Titus 1 says then, Paul, the apostle of Christ, servant of Christ, to further your faith and your knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. See, to wrap up that point, your godliness comes from the growth of your faith and the knowledge of the Word of God combined together. Then your godliness grow. Then your ability to become godly in a very sensual and corrupt world depends on your faith and your knowledge of the Word of God. These two combined together is in uh, is invisible, Invinci it invisible, you know. So you can no one can beat you. It's it's absolutely powerful. Okay, so and that leads to godliness, which will lead to eternal life, which is promised by God, who does not lie, before the beginning of the world. Now, finally, I just want to say that that phrase, beginning before the beginning of the world, is a huge assurance of our salvation and of victory in Christ over the evil one. Uh, for our church, for our folks, our friends, and for our children, for our family, for everyone. If we further growing our faith in Christ and the knowledge of the truth, and therefore our godliness, we're invincible. No one can pull us down. In Christ, we will advance the gospel, even though the enemies try to target us. But we shall prevail. We shall prevail. Hallelujah. We need to, you know, faith grows actually when adversity hits. So, adverse situations, circumstances hit you, your faith begins to grow accordingly. Amen. Our faith responds to, to the arrows coming at us. The more arrows shooting at us, the more our faith grows. That will be the day, just like we can take down the Goliath like David did. And he has brought glory to God and brought salvation to, to Israel. Hallelujah. Amen.